Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today I'm going to show you how to make a spark frame ripper. Okay, so this is all in Spark, not in uh, not a sprite, not a uh, MXML Halo component, but all Spark. And uh, so a lot of you guys are probably wondering where have you guys been? I mean, it's like you've abandoned us. And I've even got some angry emails on my blog, and you know, where are you? And basically, there has been a tremendous technology change in uh, Adobe's uh, approach to the web. And that is a new Spark technology. So, but before we start putting that stuff on the web for you guys to see it, we've got to work through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples and figure out how the, all this stuff interconnects. And so, what I'm going to show you today is basically how to create a movie, uh, in a sense, a movie in uh, Spark or in uh, or in Flash Builder. Just a simple animation. Now, we're going to use this for much more. We're going to use this to build a particle camera cloud. But before we do that, let's walk before we run. So, let's open up a uh, Flash Builder. I am in Flash Builder right now. I'm basically going to go through the code step by step. So you can download all of this though from, uh, let me bring this up, http uh, forward slash forward slash code dot google dot com uh, p forward slash lively 3d forward slash download slash list. And uh, that will have the same code that is here. You want to unzip that and bring that into uh, your Flash Builder or import it into Flash Builder and it should run with no problem. And it's not using paper vision, it's not using uh, a way 3D, it's just using Spark, which is just great. And uh, why are we so excited about Spark? Because we've got our eye on mobile devices. And the pre-lease has come out, so we're going to start building some mobile stuff. But first of all, let's look at our, our, our uh, frame ripper. So what's a frame ripper? Well, basically it's an animation engine, but all it really does is it lays out all your images in a sequence and then it plays them uh, in concordance and so what we're going to use is the spark bitmap so the first thing I want to do is create a spark project It's empty and then I want to create uh, some FX script and that will basically just populate that for me you know just a basic boilerplate and I want to bring in tween light now you could do this with basically the tweening engine in flash builder by use tween light just so easy to use and it does make it a little slower so you want to speed this up by reprogramming itself but for the demo this is fine and if you look over here in the uh, resource files, you're going to see there's my SRC and there's my default package. Here's my assets. So I want my explosion images right here. There you go. And I want my media. I got a little uh, popping ball sound there. And uh, I have a tween light right here. You can download it from the site. Or if you download it from uh, my uh, code, it's right in there. So just you know, use it. Don't even worry about downloading it. But they've done a tremendous job with tween light. I love it. And here's a utility package, very important. This is Explosion Embed Class. And what I have here, if you bring this up, is I have uh, basically a utilities class I created that has all my images basically um, in embed tags. And I'm going to go all the way through that. I want to embed them because it is an animation. And then I, in the end, I throw all those embed uh, classes into an array. And I just tick through that array using tween light. Pretty easy stuff. Let's go on with the code. And so that's everything that's in the uh, Explorer package here. Let's go back and take a look at the code. So we'll go to our Spark Frame Ripper. There it is. And so the first thing I want to do, of course, is import tween light. Then I'm going to bring in that Spark primitive, which basically is that bitmap file. Now, if I Adobe Flash or Flex is one of we just did a, a dot there and it shows you what's inside that class. And th what I'm looking for is pretty much that bitmap image, okay, which is called a Spark primitive. I just put a star there just for the heck of it, and I want to import my Flash Media. This is all for my sound system, okay? And so if I click once again a dot there, and there's all my sound channel and uh, sound, that's what I want there. And uh, and I have a Utilities Embed class. That's my embed uh, class that comes from right here. There's my embed class. I'm bringing that in. And then I want to make, uh, basically instantiate it so I can use it and use all the methods inside it. And I have a little, uh, basically, iteration here, my I. I'm going to iterate through the number of frames. So as I iterate through the frames, I'm going to decide when I get to the end and stop shooting them in. Uh, here's all the sound stuff. I won't go over that. Uh, that's covered in Adobe's Docs. But I just basically cut and paste all this sound stuff right in. And, uh, and it's got a nice play and stop method. Now, you could have just used simple UR methods, but... I use this because it's a little more complicated, but you're going to be doing more complicated things. So you want a more hefty sound engine. So you want to be able to work with stop and play and pause and all these other items right here. And uh, I'll let you go through the Adobe Docs. I won't go through all of that. But here's the important part. Here's the business side. It's a tween ending, tweening engine. And I've got basically a tween down method that brings in the initial I. 
It populates it with the bitmap that's found in your bitmap class. There you go. And then pretty much using tween light, what I do is I have a delay. And that delay, basically the inverse of that, is your frame rate. So in this particular instance, it's 0.04. And we're going to get our calculator out and show you what the frame rate should be. Okay, so you just go 0 0.04 and take the inverse. Should be here somewhere. There it is. And my frame rate should be 25 frames per second. There you go. And uh, once that is done, and the next frame comes up, I iterate. Then I have here a little modulus. I mean, this is moduli. Modulus is the greatest thing since sliced bed. Because what I'm going to tell this is when I get the frame 15, shoot this to zero. And when I get to zero, just don't execute the uh, tween down again. So this is an infinite loop. And it keeps going round and round and round until you get to zero. And it stops it because it doesn't tell it to fire it again. And a little note here, it says, didn't your mother ever tell you not to create infinite loops? And so there's two ways to do this. I just take, I just drive the truck to where there's nothing there. But you could also put a, a, a go or stop flag in here as well. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Isn't that pretty neat? That's uh, that short amount of code. You can create a frame ripper. And, you know, guys, go ahead and download it, look at the code, analyze it. And let's run it a few more times uh, to get our jollies, and then I'm done with this, okay? Hey, real basic example. I just want to click it all day long, you know? Oh, -ho, it works. Okay, so let me just explain one more thing. Let's look at this button. What's happening when I click this button? Now, what you want to do in Adobe uh, Flash Builder, let's go back real quick, is uh, basically uh, go to design and when you're in design what you want to do is click on that button and when you do what that will do it go back to source that takes you right to where the code is and we can see in the code there's a click initiate a i n i t so that's an event driven mouse event i'm going to hold down the control key now look what happens when i hold down the control key that highlights i can actually click that and see what method that's executing so let's click that and it takes me up to this method right here and so what's happening here is I'm taking that bitmap and I'm throwing it into a group holder. Let's go and take a look at it. There's my group right there. Oh, this is all Spark. How wonderful. And it throws it right in that bitmap, right into that uh, Spark holder. Now I could actually rotate that and do all types of things with it, but I'm not doing that right now. Okay. And so that element is established and it's a bitmap. And then I basically play the sound, I execute the code, and the code takes you down, basically starts at frame zero. Okay. And it takes you down a tween down, and it basically iterates the uh, image that's in that holder, and there's a delay with your frame rate, and then uh, you iterate one so you're not at zero uh, for the, where your truck needs to drive when you're done. So that's all there is to it. There are 15 frames in there, and when it gets to 15, uh, the mod turns it into zero, and it parks the truck, and you're done with the animation. But basically, you can control it just by clicking this button, which you could do with action script whenever you need an explosion, and then place it by X, Y, and Z wherever you need it to be. Now, what a professional animator will do is take this animation right here, and he'll chop it up basically into three pieces, uh, basically frontal, side, and down. And to put all those into it, essentially will give you a simulated 3D look of explosion. I kind of did that with what I called a uh, Second Life tree a long time ago. But uh, we're not doing Second Life right now, so uh, that's how it goes. Uh, great doing another video. We're going to be actually moving on and showing you how to develop a Spark camera system. That's the one thing missing in Spark, basically, is a camera system. And uh, we'll be putting all that together in future videos to come.